Hey, what's up everyone? TJ here. Today we're checking out the Spring Break Powder Twin Snowboard. I'm gonna go through all the tech and I'll share my thoughts on how it felt out on the mountain as well. All right, so the Spring Break Powder Twin is an all mountain and powder focused snowboard on the Spring Break lineup with a true twin shape. So it's got a perfectly symmetrical shape, it's got a twin flex, and it's gonna give you the same performance riding in either direction. This is a camber dominant snowboard and it runs their Surf Rocker Twin Profile. So it's gonna be positive camber from insert pack to insert pack. Then you're gonna have a small flat section and rocker going out to the nose and to the tail. A pretty significant rocker section there. Those rocker sections are gonna help this board out in powder as well as give you a nice platform for butters and leaning into presses. But overall, it's gonna have that camber dominant feel with some good energy, some good precision and a pretty nice powerful feel overall. This isn't a super soft, wimpy snowboard. You're also gonna find some basalt built into this board. So it's got two pieces running vertically down the entire length of the board from nose to tail. Has similar properties to carbon fiber, so it's gonna help give this board a little bit more energy, more snap and stability, while keeping the weight down and using a naturally sourced material. The Powder Twin also runs their super light core, so this is actually a pretty light snowboard, staying consistent with the rest of the spring brake line. I think that's something uh, generally found in every spring brake board I've ever ridden. They are surprisingly light and still come through with some great performance. For reference, I weigh around 150 pounds, I'm five foot 10, and I rode this board in a 156. And the idea with the Powder Twin was to design a freestyle friendly snowboard that's a true twin that offers some nice benefit in powder. So there's a few things I wanna talk about in the design that kind of help with that. One is the overall shape of the board. So if you look at where the contact points are, that widest point on the nose and tail, you'll notice that there's a pretty significant amount of board material outside those contact points. So there's a pretty big nose and a pretty big tail. So it's gonna have a different feel in soft snow or in powder snow versus on hard pack. When you are in powder, you're gonna use the full length of the board from the very tip of the nose to the very tip of the tail. You're gonna get some benefit having that added material in the nose and tail, increasing the overall surface area, just helping to give you more float when you are in soft snow. And on hard pack, say you're doing park laps, you're carving, what have you, it's actually gonna give the board a bit of a shorter effective edge compared to another twin 156. So the effective edge is the actual length of the metal edge that's in contact with the snow between the contact points. So having a shorter effective edge is gonna make this board a little bit more maneuverable and make it feel like a smaller size when you are on that hard pack, which is a nice benefit. Another thing with the Spring Break Twin is that it's very wide. So the 156 is 26.8 centimeters at the waist. That's gonna increase the overall surface area of the board, again, helping to give it more float. And that combined with the rocker and the tips, that long nose and tail, all those things are gonna to work together to help give this board significantly more float compared to your traditional Park Twin. Another advantage of this wide shape is that if you have a bigger boot size, it's gonna to help to eliminate that heel and toe overhang that you can get on more narrow snowboards. So if you do have a bigger boot size, this is gonna be a good choice to check out. And if you like to carve and get that board at a more aggressive edge angle, it's also gonna be a nice benefit there, you know, whether you have a big boot size or not. And carving was actually one of the standouts for me with this board. If you like doing those more aggressive carves, laying the board over, Euro carves, all that kind of stuff, that width is really gonna come in handy, but it's actually a very stable snowboard as well. It felt solid going fast and cruising around at higher speeds. I didn't really find a lot of chatter in the nose and tail, and it was actually able to hold on to carves pretty well, even through choppier snow. If you got bucked out of your edge, it was able to bite back down and keep you locked into the car without washing out or losing control. So. Pretty sweet carving experience overall on this board in my opinion. Although it does have a bit of a tight side cut, the 156 comes in right at 6.6 .6 meters. So definitely a little bit tighter than average, which is helpful at slower speeds, but you wanna be aware of that as you start to go a little bit faster because it does throw you into a bit of a tighter turn. Those rocker tips are gonna to help to give you smooth, easy turn initiation. Although with the wide waist width, it does take a little bit more effort to pull this thing from edge to edge. It's not the fastest transition going from heel to toe. 
I was a little surprised with the flex on this snowboard. I thought it was gonna be a bit of a softer flexing board, but after spending a few days on it, I definitely think it's on the stiffer side of medium. Comes through with some really solid stability. It's got some good energy. You're gonna find some good pop in this snowboard as well. And that just kind of helps to complement those rocker tips. So it's not super loose and playful. It's actually a fairly aggressive, pretty stable, energetic snowboard. And when it comes to park laps, I thought this board was a lot of fun. It's just an all around park board. That tighter side cut's gonna help to get you set up with those more fine tuned adjustments as you're approaching rail features. It's a lot of fun on jumps as well. But overall, I think it is a little bit more jump leaning. You know, it's fairly stiff. It's gonna come through with some great stability for landings on jumps and in those higher impact situations on bigger features. The width in this board isn't really that helpful either for doing those more technical rail tricks where torsional flex comes in handy and doing presses and things like that's going to take a little bit more effort as well. You can definitely still do it, but I wouldn't say this board is especially jib friendly. For freestyle focused riding, I'd be looking at hitting natural features with this board. I think that's where you can have a lot of fun on this board and what sets this apart from a lot of other twins. For the park test, I was lapping this board out at Copper here in Colorado, but I was actually able to get it in some pretty sweet powder as well out in Utah. I found a really fun zone with a nice cornice drop and a bunch of other natural features. And I feel like I really got to test this board out well for some significant drops into powder landings, which was the main thing I wanted to try on this board. And that is one of the biggest standouts for me on the powder twin. That combination of the camber to the rocker tips that long nose and tail outside the contact points all work together to really help stomp landings and powder. And you know, the big advantage with this board is that it's gonna feel exactly the same regular or switch. Another thing with that camber between the feet going into rocker is that on those higher impact situations where you're landing, you're you know getting tension built up into the board, when that camber is activated, it's actually gonna lift those rocker sections even more to help scoop you up out of the powder and back up on top of the snow for the landing. And I felt like that really came through solid for me. I hit the exact same feature on this board and a full positive camber board and the spring break powder twin did so much better. So I think if you're trying to do that kind of stuff, that's gonna be a huge highlight with this one. And you're gonna find some nice float on this board in general. You know, if you take it out on a pow day, you're doing some exploring, you're getting in the trees, you're looking to just do some slashes, it's gonna be a lot of fun for that type of riding. Definitely offers a pretty significant benefit over your typical park twin. And I'm just stoked to see more of this style of board out on the market nowadays. One of the most common questions I get asked is people that are looking for a park board that's also gonna do well as a powder board, which you know is pretty much exact opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to snowboard design. So if that's you, this is gonna be the type of board that you're looking for. Or if you just have a bigger boot size and you've had trouble finding a park board, this could be a great choice as well. Overall, I think this is gonna be a great choice for you more freestyle focused riders that are looking to take that style of riding out to the rest of the mountain. So if you're out there exploring, you're riding through variable conditions, you're looking for natural features, you're hitting drops into powder, doing that kind of stuff. This is gonna be a really fun board. And I definitely wouldn't say it's a beginner board. It has a somewhat aggressive feel to it with that stiffer flex and that width as well. It's probably better suited for you more experienced riders or at least like intermediate and up. So if that sounds like you, make sure to check this one out. I'll have it linked down below if you guys wanna read more about it. And if you've had a chance to ride this board, let us know what you thought about it down in the comments. You can leave any questions for me down there as well. Drop a like on the video if you got some value. Subscribe for more snowboard reviews. I really appreciate it guys. Thank you so much for all your support and I'll see you in a new video next time. Later guys.